Today we're going to learn how to style text inside our website. And the reason I want to do this today is because for the past couple of episodes, we talked about how to use CSS inside the website. So since most websites have a lot of text inside of it, it's very important that we know exactly how to change the text to make it look exactly the way we want it to inside our website. Basically what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you guys some examples of stylings that we use inside text in order to change the look of the text. So as you guys can see inside my index file, I have nothing going on inside the file here, except for the basic setup that we need to have in order to have a basic website. Inside my style sheet, I deleted everything, including the reset styling, to make sure we only have our code inside the style sheet. So what I'm going to do inside my index file is I'm going to go ahead and create a h tag. I'm going to create a h1 tag. And inside the h1 tag, I'm going to say, this is a title because we need to have some text inside the website in order to actually change it. Now underneath the h1 tag, I'm going to write a paragraph tag. I'm going to say this is a paragraph, just so we have some text going on inside the paragraph. Now we haven't talked about links yet, and I'm not going to get too much into links today because I want to have a separate episode on it, but just to have a link inside this example here, because the link does actually have some default styling to it, I'm going to go ahead and create a link. Now a link we create the same way as we do with paragraphs, except for we add a attribute inside the opening tag called href, which stands for hyperreference. And then for today's purpose, we're just gonna set the value of this hyperreference to hashtag. So inside the link, I'm going to say, this is a link. So now we should have some different text going on inside the website. So if I were to go inside my browser, refresh, you guys can see we have a title, a paragraph, and a link that we can actually click on because it does absolutely nothing inside the website. So now what I want to do is I want to go inside my style sheet and I want to start styling these elements here. So what I'm going to do to start with is I'm going to target the h1 tag inside the website or at least all the h1 tags we might have inside the website. And we do that by saying h1 space curly brackets and then inside the curly brackets we can add the styling that we want to apply to the h1 tags. Now, when it comes to styling text inside a website, we have different properties that we can use inside the curly brackets in order to actually get some sort of styling going on inside the website. Now, to begin with, I'm going to show you guys some properties that has font dash something inside of its name in order to focus on these ones first. So the first one is going to be called font dash family. And this one is going to be the one that decides which font you want to use inside the website. So if I were to say Arial, close it off here, and refresh my browser, you guys can see that my title here is going to change into Arial. And now you guys can see we're using a different font inside the title than we do down in the paragraph and inside the link. Now the link and the paragraph down here has the default styling that the browser is going to give it. So unless we actually write something specific inside our style sheet, the browser is going to apply default styling to our elements. So right now we applied Arial, but what if we're using a browser that does not have Arial as a font programmed into the browser? What we can do is we can go inside our font family, we can say comma, space, and then we can add another font in here. By adding another font, we basically tell the browser that if you do not have the first one, which is Arial, then you should jump to the next one and see if you have that font instead. So right here, we could actually say Times New Roman, And one thing I want to point out here, since we're using multiple words inside the font family here, since Times New Roman has three words in it, we need to use double quotes around it. So we need to do it like this. Now, as you guys can see, I did actually write Times New Roman in capitalized letters as well. You could also do that with Arial, but as you guys could see inside the website, it doesn't really matter if you use it with capitalized letters or non-capitalized. Now, the next one we're going to focus on is the font size. So we're going to say font-size. We're going to set this one equal to something like 22 pixels. Now we do have different measurements when it comes to the font size. And if you guys are interested in seeing some of the other different measurements we can use, I'm going to leave a link in the description so you guys can check them out. So we're to save this, go inside my browser, refresh. You guys can see that the font change size. Now the next one is called font-style. And the font style basically allow for us to make the text italic, normal, or bleak, just like it says inside my editor here. So if I were to choose italic, save it, go inside my browser, refresh, you guys can see we get a italic text style. Now the next styling is going to be something called font weight. 
And right now, if we were to go inside the browser, you may notice that the paragraph has a much thinner text compared to the header tag up here. So the header tag has very thick letters. And what we can do is we can actually go inside our styling, say font dash weight and change it to something between 100 to 900. So we can actually say 100 without anything behind it. Go inside the browser, refresh, and now you guys can see we get a different thickness of the letters in here. Now the next stylings we're going to move into are the ones that doesn't start with font dash, but instead text dash. So underneath here, we're going to say we have something called text align. And what this one does is that allow for us to align the text to either the left, the center, the right, or we could justify it. So what I can do is I can say right. And if I were to save it, go inside my browser, refresh, you guys will notice that the text goes to the right side of the screen. We can also go ahead and center it. And as you guys may guess, it goes to the center of the screen. Now we have something called justify. If I were to use it and show you guys, you guys can see that nothing happens to the text. But if we were to have the text inside a box of some sort inside the website, it would actually stretch the text to make sure that we have the equal amount of spacing in between each letter for the entire line to cover the entire width that the box is inside of, sort of like when you read a newspaper. So I'm just going to change this one back to left since we don't want to have this inside the website. And the next one I want to show you guys is text decoration. Now, right now, if we were to actually write this inside my style sheet here, you guys will notice that if I were to set this one to none to make sure we don't have any kind of text decoration, nothing happens inside the browser when I refresh. And that's because right now the text doesn't actually have any kind of decoration applied to it. But as you guys can see, the link down here does actually have an underline underneath it. If we were to go back inside my style sheet, instead we want to style all the links inside the website and set text decoration to none. You guys can see that we do actually not have a underline anymore underneath the link in here. We could also go inside our text decoration up here and say we want to have a line through, overline, underline if you wanted to, which basically just applies one of these stylings to the text. So if we were to say underline, save it, go inside my browser, you guys can see that we now have an underline underneath the header in here. Now the next one I want to show you guys is something called text indent. So if we were to say text dash indent. What we can do here is if we were to have a huge chunk of text inside my website, you guys may have seen inside some websites or inside newspapers when you have a huge chunk of text, then the first line inside the paragraph is going to be moved out slightly. So this is basically what we're doing here. So if we were to say we want to have 30 pixels as a text indent, if we were to go inside the browser, because this line here is the first line inside this header tag, it's going to move out the text 30 pixels. Okay. If you had a huge chunk of text that would go on multiple lines, then it would only be the first line that gets moved out 30 pixels. Now the next one we're going to look at is the one called text transform. So we're going to say text dash transform. And this is the one I usually use if I want to capitalize the entire header or the entire paragraph, or if I want it all to be lowercase. So if we were to say capitalize, save it, then you guys can see that every word inside the header here has been capitalized. We can also capitalize everything by saying uppercase instead. So we can say uppercase, go back inside the browser, refresh, and now everything has been capitalized. And this of course goes with lowercase as well. If we want to do that, save it, refresh the browser, and now everything has been lowercase even though inside my index file, I did actually uppercase the first letter inside the header. So now we talked a bit about the ones that has text dash something in front of it. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the ones that don't have anything in front of it, but just has a property name that doesn't start with anything. So we want to change the color of the text. We actually talked about this one a couple of episodes ago. I can say color and set this one to red, for example, refresh the browser. And as you guys can see, now the header turned red. Now, of course, we can't really say red when it comes to changing the color of different elements. So what we can do is we can use something called the hex color or RGB colors. So if we were to go inside the color and change it to hashtag and then write the hex color code for some sort of red color, I could say FF 
0000000. And as you guys can see, we do actually have six different letters or numbers inside the hex color code in order for it to have some kind of value that actually counts. Now, if we do actually use something like a black color, which is just 0006 times, then we can use just three of them and it will still count as black. But you can only do this if the color code has the same number or letter inside of it all the way through. So if we were to save this and go inside my browser, you guys can see that we still have red inside the browser because this color code here is red. Now I can actually go ahead and use something called the Adobe Color Wheel. I will leave a link in the description in case you guys want to get the color code for some of the different colors that you might want to have inside your website. And as you guys can see with this tool here, I can actually go ahead and adjust some of these colors inside my browser. So I can actually say we want to have monochromatic or complementary colors, which means that we have opposites. So I can go ahead and say, if I want to have something like this blue down here, I can actually get the RGB or the hex color code for it and just simply copy it and paste it inside my code. And then we have a new color going on inside the browser. And the color wheel here is absolutely free. You don't have to pay anything inside Adobe's website to get it. It's just color.adobe.com if you want to use it. Otherwise, I usually use Photoshop or Illustrator, which is Adobe programs, in order to get the correct hex code that I want to use inside the website. So this is how we can use hex colors, but if I want to use RGB colors, we can also go ahead and use that inside the style sheet here. So I can say RGB, parentheses, and then I just need to add three different values inside the parentheses. And again, we can use the Adobe color wheel in order to get the colors. So let's say I want to have this yellow down here, which is 255, 244, and 96. So we can say 255, comma, 244, comma, 96. If that was correct, I go inside my browser, refresh, and as you guys can see, we now get a yellow color. Now, you might be asking, when should we use hex colors versus RGB colors inside our website? Now, personally, I only use RGB colors if I want the text to be transparent or if I want a background color to be transparent because when it comes to RGB colors, we can actually go ahead and add a fourth value inside the parentheses, which is going to be the alpha value. Now, the alpha value we can set to something between zero and one, depending on how transparent we want the background color to be. So I could actually go ahead and say we don't have RGB, but we have RGB A, and then I can insert a fourth parameter, which is going to be something like 0 0.5, and I do want you guys to notice that I did actually change the text to blue just to illustrate this better than the yellow color we had before. And if we were to refresh the browser, it became slightly transparent. So I usually use hex colors unless I want to make something transparent. Then I do actually use RGB A colors. Now, before we continue, I would like to actually make this an entire blue color just so we can see what's going on. So I'm just going to say one. And as you guys can see, it's not transparent anymore. And the next one we're going to focus on is the one called letter spacing. So we're going to say letter dash spacing and then we're going to set this one to some kind of value and again we can set this one to different types of values i'm just going to focus on pixels here so i can set this one to maybe 10 pixels if we were to go back inside my browser refresh you guys can see that we changed the letter spacing to make sure there's at least 10 pixels of space in between each letter inside this sentence here we can also go back and change it to a minus so we can say minus 10 which might look slightly weird but as you guys can see, we now have a minus spacing in between the letters. This also takes me to the point that you can also write instead of letter spacing, we can say word spacing. So we we'll to change this one back to 10 and refresh the browser. You guys can see that each word has a spacing of 10 pixels in between them. Now, the last one I'm going to show you guys is one that I use all the time inside my own websites because it's very important that you use the styling inside your text. Otherwise, the text might not look as pretty as it could be, which is the one called line height. So if we were to say line dash height, we can actually adjust the height in between the lines inside a paragraph. So just to show you guys an actual paragraph that doesn't just have this is a paragraph inside of it because we need more text, I'm going to go inside lipsum.com and I'm going to generate some random gibberish text that I can actually use for this example. I'm going to copy it, paste it inside my paragraph here. And by the way, if you're using Atom and you see that this is going way beyond the view here, you can actually go ahead and change this by going inside view and say toggle soft wrap. And then you guys can see it doesn't go beyond what we can actually see inside the editor. If I were to save it, go inside my browser, refresh, you guys can see we have way more text inside the browser here. So I can go back inside my style sheet and set the line height to something like 
40 pixels. And again, you can change the different values. You don't have to use pixels, but in this case, I'm going to be using pixels since my font size is also pixels as well. So if I were to go inside my browser, refresh, whoops, then we do actually need to style the paragraph, not the header tag. So I'm going to say we have a paragraph and say we want to change the line height to 40 pixels and the font size to 22 pixels just to make sure we have something inside the website. Now you guys can see we have larger text that also has a lot of spacing in between the lines. If we were to change the line height to something like 22, refresh the browser, you guys can see it changes the line height and does a huge difference to the readability of your text when you use line height. So you probably shouldn't be using 22 for a 22 font size. So we're going to change this one to maybe 30. Like so, much better. And now just to show you guys, I did actually include the text indent inside the paragraph just to show you guys that we could actually indent the first line inside the paragraph. So this is how we can style text inside a website. Now we haven't talked about how to import new fonts inside your website because right now, like I said, some browsers do not have all fonts inside of them. And if you want to use a special font that you can't really find on a standard computer, then you need to import a font into your website in order to actually use it. We're gonna talk about that in the next episode. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.